Just over 20 years ago, member states of the United Nations signed a convention against transnational organized crime. It's also known as the Palermo Convention. And the purpose of the Palermo Convention is to promote cooperation to prevent and combat organized crime more effectively. This was a huge step forward in terms of developing a common legal framework to fight crime, indeed a vision to fight organized crime globally. After all, a transnational problem like organized crime needs a multilateral solution. However, in the past two decades, despite the Palermo Convention, organized crime has changed beyond recognition, growing exponentially across the world. We live in an interconnected world. What happens in one place on our planet can have an impact on us all. Over the past 30 years, globalization has created many opportunities and great wealth. But some of the biggest winners have been criminal groups. Organized criminal groups have taken advantage of the opening of new markets, supply chains and technologies while exploiting weak regulation in financial markets and cyberspace. This has generated enormous wealth for the corrupt and the criminal. But the global crime boom has also become a threat to peace, development, the environment, health and justice around the world. Why has this happened? What is the impact and what can be done? A new report by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime looks at the trajectory of the illicit economy from the past to the future, including the reasons why this problem has gone global and accelerated. It reveals the factors that have enabled this boom, looks at key illicit markets and warns of the potential dangers of the future of crime. So what factors have enabled organized crime to flourish? Technology has been a great accelerator and innovation has outpaced regulation. Criminal groups have been quick to tap into new markets, find new victims and communicate and move money more covertly. The internet has also been an enabler for the expansion of illegal economies, using many of the same tools as we do selling guns, drugs, or humans on social media and communications apps. It has enabled an increase in coordinated ransomware and phishing attacks, and a growth in dark markets where you can buy and sell almost anything. The internet is also a gold mine of data that can be used for corruption, extortion, and carrying out other crimes. More traditional types of connectivity have also facilitated organized crime, like a massive increase in the number of containers moving goods around the world, more flights and better infrastructure. Organized crime is destroying our ecosystem and profiting from it. Illegal logging is cutting out the lungs of our planet and illicit fishing is emptying our oceans. The poaching of protected species is throwing delicate ecosystems out of balance. Unregulated mining and illegal drug cultivation are destroying forests, polluting water supplies and depleting finite resources that belong to us all. Demography and mobility are also major drivers of organized crime. As more people move into cities, many municipalities are unable to provide public services and public security. This is leading to the growth of slums, where criminal groups are stepping in to provide their own kind of governance, protection and services. Because of wars, poverty and climate change, there are millions of desperate people on the move. Building fences and walls merely creates greater incentives for smugglers to get around these barriers. Inequality is also a major factor. The rich have become richer leaving the rest of the world behind. Opportunities for legal work have been decreasing. This has played into the hands of criminal economies, which exploit the vulnerable. The problem of inequality is compounded by bank secrecy, tax havens, and cryptocurrencies that enable money to be moved and saved in an opaque way. This deprives states of badly needed revenue and makes it easy for criminals and their corrupt accomplices to hide their wealth. Conflict zones are fertile areas for illicit markets like smuggling weapons, oil, drugs and natural resources. 
Conflict also incubates protection economies for the delivery of humanitarian assistance and creates a new pool of displaced people who often become victims of human trafficking or clients for smugglers. In both the violent urban centers and the fragile post-conflict environments, criminals often become power brokers, using the bullet and the bribe to gain influence and impunity. Even democratic processes in more stable parts of the world are under threat from organized crime. Election campaigns are expensive. Money buys power. Corruption and the infiltration of criminal agendas into democratic systems can be corrosive to the rule of law. All of these factors are linked and all of them are exploited by crime. And it is a vicious circle. Transnational organized crime scours the world looking for vulnerability and where it finds it makes that vulnerability worse, fueling yet more crime. As a result, transnational organized crime is both a driver and a profiteer of many of the ills affecting our planet. Let us look at five markets that have had extraordinary growth in the past 20 years. Human exploitation, environmental crime, drugs, cybercrime, and licit goods. The exploitation of people is one of the most horrendous crimes. It is estimated that around 40 million people, mostly women and children, are victims of human trafficking, exploited for forced labor or sex. To put that in perspective, that's roughly the same as the population of London, New York, Paris, and Moscow combined. The internet has been a game changer for sexual exploitation. Criminals and consumers can operate anonymously, while children are at more risk than ever before. The number of refugees and migrants is rising, but they are becoming less welcome. In 1990, there were 15 border walls. Today, there are 70. Restrictions introduced as a result of COVID-19 have further reduced mobility, and refugees and migrants are at greater risk of exploitation by traffickers. If push factors like war, poverty, demography and climate change are not addressed, the smuggling of migrants and human exploitation will continue to rise. Illicit environmental markets from natural mineral resources to endangered terrestrial and marine species have become a billion dollar business. The illegal wildlife trade has soared, driven by social media and e-commerce platforms. The tech industry has also increased demand for precious metals needed to produce computers and mobile phones. 
But these markets have a high environmental cost, driving deforestation, pushing species to extinction, and generating huge amounts of toxic e-waste that is often dumped illegally. Over the past 20 years, it has become clear that international efforts to control drugs have failed. Heroin and cocaine production has hit record levels, while new psychoactive substances and opioids have wreaked havoc on communities across the world. increasing amounts of the drugs trade is moving online and supply chains are changing. Synthetic drugs can be made close to point of sale, removing the need for complicated trafficking networks. Clients can order online and receive their goods by post. The vast sums generated by the trade may be as dangerous as the drugs themselves. Drug money is buying power and impunity, and even funding elections and armed groups. In response, many states have declared war on drugs, but this usually leads to militarization, human rights abuses, and an escalation of violence. In the past 10 years, Opinions and laws have started to change, leading to the legalization of cannabis and broader debates about drug control policies. But efforts have fallen far short of what's required. Cybercrime is one of the fastest growing illicit markets. Online commerce has provided enormous opportunity for fraud, identity theft and cyber extortion. As strange as it may seem, the illegal production, movement and sale of normally legal goods is the largest of all illicit markets. Licit and illicit goods often follow the same supply chains and are sold by the same vendors. Anything from toys to electronics, beauty products to fake luxury goods.
One of the most cynical and dangerous product lines is counterfeit medicines, which the World Health Organization estimates may be responsible for more than 1 million deaths a year. The COVID-19 pandemic has created huge opportunities for fake vaccines and medical products. These markets are not just in the underworld. They have grown in response to demand from consumers, people like you and I. And they couldn't operate without accomplices in the upper worlds of politics, finance, law enforcement and business. And therefore, we have a shared responsibility to put the global illicit economy into recession. It's in our self-interest. Otherwise, we will pay the price for unsustainable development. Yet, at the moment, there is no global strategy to fight transnational organized crime. And this issue, which is so central to good governance, to sustainable development, as well as to peace and security, is still on the margins of the international agenda. And this really needs to change. You, you might be thinking, there are so many other challenges at the moment, like the pandemic itself, climate change, illiberal democracy, migration and conflict. Is organized crime really a priority? The answer is yes, it is, because it affects all of these other major crises that we face. There will be no sustainable development, good governance, managed migration or lasting peace if we cannot control illicit markets and organized crime. As big as the problem of organized crime and illicit markets is, we should not be fatalistic. There are things that can and must be done. Our report lays out three structural requirements, three priority issues and three fundamental prerequisites that will be needed if we are to have a real impact in containing illicit markets. The three structural requirements needed to frame our response are, first, a global strategy that is high-level political buy-in and a comprehensive approach. Second, more and better information, a regularly updated evidence base on which responses can be designed and implemented. And third, and importantly, a commitment and a means to bring the voices of people most affected by organized crime into policy settings at national, at regional and international level, so that their protection is front and center of our response. While all illicit markets are damaging, we see three issues that require urgent and a priority response. First, human life should be at the center of our efforts to fight to organize crime. And that means focusing on reducing the violence associated with crime, as well as the violence associated with responses. Secondly, preventing species and biodiversity loss by ensuring that crime fighting is at the heart of environmental protection. We need to call out the criminals and corporations who are profiting from the plunder of our planet, increase consumer awareness, and reduce the incentives for being drawn into these markets. Third, we need an open dialogue on drug policy. The debate needs a reset to address the issue from the perspective of health and development, as well as from law enforcement. Finally, as our report has shown, there are several structural issues that are enabling criminal groups and illicit markets. And unless these are addressed, we are unlikely to see an effective response. Since the internet and social media are enablers for illicit markets, Stronger regulation is necessary for preventing the abuse of open platforms and open societies. As organized crime is motivated by profit, governments and the private sector need to cut off opportunities to move dark money globally and anonymously. And this means closing down the tax havens and secrecy jurisdictions and improving beneficial ownership and corporate registration. Finally, it has become increasingly obvious that corruption is a global lubricant for crime. Governments, civil society and the media need to shine the light of truth on dirty links between business, politics and criminal elites. And efforts to fight organized crime and corruption should be joined up in ways that they have not been done before. And none of these things are per se new. These are, however, the building blocks of a global strategy to combat transnational organized crime. This is a huge challenge, but it's an urgent and a necessary one, and we are not doing now what needs to be done. Let's work together to change the trajectories of organized crime and to build a safer world.